Hi, I'm Midnight Mule and today I thought I'd talk a bit about parenting as somebody with Asperger's. Now there's plenty online I've found about parenting if you've got an Aspie child but you're NT. But what about when it's the parent who's the Aspie? So I, as some other videos I've done, I haven't got any advice here. I'm just relaying some of my experiences. Some of you may be able to relate to this if you're Aspie. If you're neurotypical, you may find this interesting if you've got an Aspie partner, because it may help to explain why they are the way they are and what it is they're actually feeling and thinking when they're doing things. So I guess to start from the beginning, when I was younger, I always assumed I'd be married or wanted to be married. I'd be very happy to be married. Regarding kids, I didn't mind if we had kids or didn't have kids. So if the person I met wanted children, that's fine. If they didn't, that's fine. If they wanted one, that's fine. If they wanted 20, that's fine. I was just incredibly relaxed about the whole thing. That may have been partly affected by my upbringing. So uh, my dad died when I was 10, but what I remember of him, he was going out to work and then he'd come back and he wasn't at all hands on. If he ever did anything with us, it was he'd take us to the farm and then we could play at the farm or work at the farm. But I was fine with that. And then my mum remarried a couple of years after my dad died. And again, my stepdad was very hands off. We just did what we wanted to do. And he never really interacted with us or specifically never took us to a game or played football with us or anything. So my role model of what a dad was like was simply the mother basically took care of them and the dad might do something if the mother asked. And so I guess that was partly my expectation. So that may have affected me slightly, but then of course there's the whole Aspie side of things. Now I had, I have two half sisters that are maybe 15 years or so younger than me. And so I was at home as a teenager when they were growing up and we got on very well and we still get on very well. So I wasn't the least bit worried or nervous that I wouldn't get on with the little people as they call them. Little people are fine. I knew, I kind of figured they'd get on fine with me. So there was no problem there. So the first anecdote, if you like to relay, is when my wife was pregnant with the first child, and remember all this, all the things I'm saying we didn't know as Aspie, we went to a prenatal class, which for those of you who may not know, it's a class, there's a bunch of, <laughs> I don't know if bunch is a collective noun for women, but there's a bunch of uh, pregnant women, all very hormonal of course, being told various things about the birth and what's going on and there might be some husbands in the room as well listening and that was like an hour and an hour and a half of something and that was incredibly boring for me. It was really difficult because the pace of the lesson was very slow. I know it wasn't aimed at me but the pace was very slow and at the end I was just thinking but you could have got all that from a book in probably 10 minutes or maybe you watched a video and got it in 20 minutes. It's like, we didn't need an hour and a half to do that. And at least my wife was very sympathetic towards me and didn't take me along to any more of these things. But it was, so that was frustrating for me. Whereas maybe a neurotypical husband would have been thinking more about, oh, this is all for the wife. This is all very exciting. There's a baby in the tummy. I'm going to do everything I can to help. But for me, it was just a very slow information exchange and very frustrating. The labour, when my wife was in labour of the first child, it was a long labour. I know a lot of labour, especially the first one, can be quite long. And after, I don't remember how many hours it was, but it was very long and she was very tired at the end of it. And then right near the end, a researcher came into the room where she was going to give birth and I was there all the time, saying about some um, research she was doing to do with, I think it was some new epidural and it was experimental and would we sign this form to say it's okay to try this that and the other out and I was just like no there's no chance we're doing that so of course my wife was in labor and not getting involved in this and I was more or less just shooing her out of the room and part of that maybe as an Aspie I, I was just looking at the information presented saw there was a potential theoretical risk and like no chance this is not happening maybe some neurotypicals or perhaps a bit softer or cared a bit more about what the researcher may think may have been more polite and may have said oh that's okay but there's no way I was going to do that that was ridiculous planning on their part if they wanted to do that they should have mentioned it weeks or months in advance not just 
come in when we we're having the baby so that was crazy the way i saw the baby it was a boy the way i saw the boy when it came home is there's now three people people in the house not two and whenever i spoke to the baby or toddlers or whoever i just speak the way i speak to anyone so you'll get some adults or grown-ups to say to a child oh who's a goody goody goo oh your little sock come off whereas i'd be like hello baby oh your socks off let me put your sock on and i would just talk to the babies and the children exactly as i'd talk to anyone else and so they'd have got used to that but i remember around this time maybe when our first child was one or two were at a friend's house and they had a i think a daughter was about eight or nine at the time and so i would chat to her i think we were playing catch outside for a little while and then when i saw this person i think it's probably the next day he said how impressed he was with how i interacted with their daughter because i spoke to her like a grown-up and i didn't treat her like a kid and i didn't think anything of it i just thought of it as a person so a person might be one or might be a hundred it's still a person and this is just how i speak to people now i have seen online that this is something that aspies tend to do they don't allow for the fact that a person's only one or six or ten they just speak to the person and they don't think about the viewpoint but i'm fine with that and as a kid i was fine with that and as a kid i didn't like it when people did put on a silly voice and speak down it's just, just talk to me you got something to say just say it now something that a neurotypical husband a caring neurotypical husband might do is they might be aware that the wife who's recently had a baby is tired or would appreciate this and they may offer to do things offer to look after the baby offer to change nappies offer to whatever it is whereas I was more or less oblivious to all this but I was completely available so if my wife asked for anything I would do it but I would never think to offer or know what to offer so for example we lived in Edinburgh at the time there was a 24 7 Asda nearby so any time of the day or night I might have to pop off to Asda to get some supplies for the baby or for us if she asked me to cook the dinner I'd cook the dinner but I would never think to offer to cook the dinner and to me that seemed perfectly reasonable and I suspect for some wives that'd be perfectly reasonable as well if they knew they could just say to the husband can you do this and they did it that'd be fine uh, I think I'm sure my wife would have much preferred if I was offering my services and volunteering and thinking of things but that one didn't come natural and we didn't know as Aspie but also it's it's just totally bizarre and I wouldn't know what was required anyway if you want something just ask and I'll do it so another thing with Aspies is we we tend not to sympathize so much or do the there there I'm sorry to hear that our natural reaction is there's a problem what's the solution so one example I can think of I came home from work and our baby was I don't know six months or so sitting in a little chair and I come home and the baby was crying clearly all bothered and my wife was a bit upset because the baby was crying don't know why the baby's crying so I just knelt down and I felt the chest like that I thought oh, it's hot took the blanket off should be right now and the baby stopped crying and to me it was obvious the baby's upset oh look it's hot they are it's okay now whereas maybe a neurotypical husband may have come to the same conclusion but then also would have maybe been a bit more there there with the wife and how's your day been whereas I just come home from work that's the baby sorted then went and did whatever it was I did I don't know what that would have been at the time uh, something else the way I am with kids our kids or any kids I've always been blatantly honest so none of this nonsense oh that's a really good picture if it's rubbish if they drew a picture and I thought it was pretty poor I'd say that's actually not very good you've done this that the other wrong obviously I'd allow for the age I wouldn't expect photorealism but if they just quickly did a picture and just wanted some praise for it there's no chance they're going to get it from me we used to sometimes play catch in the hallway had a bean bag so teach them to catch teach them to throw and they'd get the hang of it and sometimes they'd only throw it halfway so I'd say well, that's a rubbish throw and they were never upset by this they just learned that sometimes it'd be like oh it's a rubbish throw and they'd say oh that was a rubbish throw or if they um for example again the drawings I would be honest with the drawings but the good point about this is they learned very soon if I said oh that's a really good drawing 
they knew I meant it and that I thought it was a good drawing. Whereas Granny, for example, might say that's a good drawing and it didn't mean anywhere near as much because they could do a squiggle and Granny would say it's a good drawing, whereas I absolutely wouldn't go there. So I'd say I get on, we have three kids. I'd say we I get on well with all three of them. It was a boy and then a girl. And then the third one was also a girl. It was just the baby because we already had a boy and a girl. I didn't want a girl too. And in my head, they're stored as boy, girl, baby, even though they do actually have names. And sometimes I get the names right, but often I don't. I found school challenging. That should be a whole different video probably. But because of that, by chance I come across when the boy was about two, homeschooling. And I was unaware that a normal family could homeschool. I assumed it was for maybe people in the military or I knew there were some ministers and churches that because they moved around a lot, they might homeschool. But it turned out that anyone could homeschool. So I looked into this and thought it was a great idea because you'd be missing out all the problems with normal school. So I got a load of booklets and showed my wife and she was like, there's no way we're going to homeschool. No, that's not happening. But I thought, well, it's OK. It's three years away yet. Things may change. And sure enough, by the time the boy would have been going to school, we'd met a couple of other homeschooling families. My wife found out it was completely doable. And so we homeschooled and that actually worked out really well. The boy did O levels and GCSEs and now he goes to a college. But the girl is still homeschooled up to her GCSEs. So that's all going OK. Now I now realise maybe all my troubles at school were to do with me being Aspie. But at the time I didn't know that. So if I could turn back time would I still go for homeschooling? I don't know. I would certainly have a different view on school and what went wrong. And I want this to be a short video so I'll just say one more thing and I've mentioned this in a different video. And that's the whole face blindness thing where when I pick up the kids from uh, nursery perhaps or from brownies, I didn't actually know. I couldn't be sure which child or which children were mine. And so because I'm face blind, I really can't tell these things. I would just wait for one of them to come up to me and be interacting with me. And if they looked close enough to what I thought our child probably thought was ours, then I could go off with them. But if I had to choose them from a lineup, I would have really struggled to be able to do that. So that's just a few, few minor things to do with what it's like being an Aspie dad and how I see things. I hope that was at least a little bit useful for somebody out there. If you agree or disagree with any of this, please leave a comment. If you think I'm a bad person, that's fine. Leave it in the comment. I'm just trying to be honest with the way things are. Thanks.